Hello, my name is Nani Salem, and I want to talk to you today about how company culture affects product success and direction. A bit about me, I've been in B2B enterprise software for 17 years, and I've, those are some of my customers, partners, and companies I worked for. And I've been in product roles for 12 years. I have owned uh, different types of products, mostly technically complex and a lot of which um, are heavy on machine learning. I have also built both product and engineering teams, set product strategy and metrics, all things that are very related to culture, hence today's topic. And I'm also an amateur bird photographer. So the agenda for today is I will start as a good product manager by talking about the why, the who and the what of this talk. And the culture, I want to talk about different aspects of the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then I will give some tips around building culture and assessing culture and some closing words. So let's jump right in with the why. So why culture? Well, product is so ingrained in the decision-making of a company that it ends up being highly dependent on company culture. Um, and that does is not the same for different organizations. Sales, for example, can sometimes have a culture that is sort of separate and uh, removed from the rest of the culture of the company. Uh, but that but that does not happen with products. So product direction um, is highly correlated with company culture. And it is also a topic that is not often addressed, and uh, not directly at least, uh, but I do think that it's important. Um, and I think it might also benefit if you're not just looking internally, but trying to understand your competitors, their direction, their actions. Um, and why now? Some of us might have seen recently in the news that there has been a push for product productivity from companies such as Google, Meta, Shopify. And that is essentially trying to change the culture. Um, so if that's something that you are thinking about, you have to be thinking about the culture because productivity cannot be separated out from that. So who is this talk for? A lot of people. Uh, number one would be product leaders. I think that culture is sort of the missing link that goes into a lot of what product leaders need to do, um, such as prioritization, uh, the ability to have information flow up to you easily so that you're able to make good decisions and culture affects all of these things. If you're an IC um, product manager, you will need to understand the culture in order to be able to work with it. And if you want to take on leadership roles, then you can also help shape it. And for everyone else um, in tech also to understand the decision making, I have had conversations with people that have had maybe certain issues. And then I point out that the department they're working with had that, has that type of culture, which leads to that type of decision making, which then results in the interactions that they are having. And, and people have found that helpful. So hopefully tips today will go along the same lines. So let's define the what. So what is culture? Well, this is the definition of Harvard Business Review. It's defined as the ways people in the organization behave and the attitudes and beliefs that inform those behaviors, i.e. the way we do things here, including formal stated norms as well as implicit ways people work and interact. And that's a good decision, but Netflix has a, a simpler, more, more direct one, which is the actual company values as opposed to the nice sounding values. Um, are, and and th these values are shown by who gets rewarded, promoted, or let go. So in essence, the uh, important decisions. Um, and I would also add that hard decisions can manifest in other places, such as incident response. So you cannot say that you are a people first company. And then if someone is mistreated in your company, things get shoved under the rug. And this does not necessarily have to come from malintentions. But I do think that this is something that culture affects a lot. Uh, things like financial decisions. I want to quote uh, Jonathan Nightingale of the Raw Signal Group. And I took their people management course. And he mentioned a story in which a 
company talked about how they value diversity and he pointed out to the fact that uh, their office, their building was not accessible. They said that they cared a lot about accessibility. Um, he still pointed out that their office was not accessible. So the you know financial decisions are also uh, show that show your values and your culture and high pressure situations and these can can have uh, very profound financial repercussions. So we probably remember the Volkswagen scandal in which the company essentially cheated on car emission uh, uh, metrics. And when this was investigated, it turned out that it, it happened because people felt that this that, that they were under a lot of pressure and that they needed to find a way to make these uh, numbers work. Here is also another example of culture in action versus the nice sounding things, again, from Netflix. We uh, know the House of Cards was a very successful Netflix show. Um, and then when uh, Kevin Spacey uh, had sexual harassment uh, complaints, Netflix decided to stop, took the decision to uh, stop uh, season six of House of Cards in 20 minutes and that's a record time and it didn't have to be sort of escalated uh to senior management and that's something that de deserves that we stop and think of of how it came to happen because for them to be able to do that that needed things to happen before the actual uh, uh, uh event which was actually true because netflix really cared about the culture you are, you were if you're in tech you probably seen or heard of the Netflix culture deck and they had rehearsed uh, situations like those and that's why they were able to make the decisions quickly so you have to be deliberate before you actually need to make a decision and uh, uh, actual events are the test and they tell you how well uh, your culture is versus what you want it to be so let's uh, talk about more examples of the good the bad and the ugly let's uh, start with the ugly because it's a short one uh, we uh, or maybe a lot of us have seen toxic cultures they're uh, very difficult to deal with and i have a magical solution and it is to just leave um, i have a magical solution and it is you can just leave and um of course every everyone has different constraints and this is not um yeah, easy however i i have seen from a lot of people that i have mentored that they were in uh, toxic situations and they they felt the need to persevere and to sort of keep at it um uh, and that, that that would be the good reflection on themselves so i want to give people permission to leave toxic cultures because I've seen it affect people's both mental and physical health actually. Uh, what about the good? What, what, like, think for a second, what comes to your mind when you think about good culture of a product company? You will probably think about being product-led, innovative, metrics-driven, agile, and experimentation. That's all um, good and nice, but you have to keep in mind that every decision is a trade-off. And as easy as it is uh, to fall in love with uh, these um, ideas, they might not be suitable for, for everyone, and they might not be suitable for everyone in all of their company's uh, stages. So if you are... Um, a, a small startup that that uh, is is just starting out and trying to figure out the product that they will build it's uh, it, you, you cannot state that your one of your values is being metrics driven uh, if you are in um, healthcare you're you're doing a complex product then maybe um uh moving fast and being agile and breaking things does not work very well for you so the uh, trade-offs need to be taken and i think uh this is the tricky part that leads to the bad side of the culture um, so let's talk about some of the examples of where 
these trade-offs on a spectrum can go wrong. So for example, on the speed and alignment will probably be a, a different end of a spectrum and you need to decide wh where you want to be. So if you end up in a situation that looks like this, uh, everyone is running in a different direction, uh, then you're probably um, ended up on the extreme end towards the speed side. Uh, if you find that you are in a situation where everyone is super busy, everyone has meetings all day, everyone has a lot of work, um, but results are not being achieved, then you might be in a situation in which you have prioritized alignment and are spending so much time on internal alignment uh, that it is really um, uh, putting in the damping up your speed. Keep in mind that we talked about this list of good things, but too much of a good thing is a bad thing and it can end up being a spoiler to your culture. So here are some examples. Collaboration is a nice sounding great value, but if you uh, uh, prioritize that too much, you will end up in the situation that we were describing, uh, which it, which I actually borrowed uh, this uh, gif from Marty Kagan uh, when he was talking about prioritizing stakeholder alignment versus following a, a product strategy. Uh, here is something else that a lot of people are a fan of, which is the uh, agile software development process. However, if you take any process, agile included, to the letter, you will end up prioritizing the process over the results. And um, I'll, I'll also mention this uh, this quote, um, which is from Bostweed. And if the name sounds, sounds familiar, that's because this is actually a real life character that was portrayed in uh, the Gangs of New York movie. Um, I heard that quote in the movie and it stuck with me because I thought it was very uh, profound and, su and subtle and at the same time. The appearance of the law must be upheld, especially when it's being broken. And, and I've seen, seen that happen with the Agile process. You, if you forget that the goal of the Agile process is to make you responsive to customers and needs and, and the, the market changes, um, and you get so hung up on the actual rituals, um, then you're probably doing more harm than good. Uh, being metrics uh, driven is a great thing, uh, but we have seen that this can actually lead, to, if, you, if you overdo it you, and you're hyper-focused on the metrics of, uh, that you have, achieve, have achieved in the past and how you can increase them in the future, then you can end up losing touch with your customers. And I personally think that this was one of the factors that have led to some of the recent uh, tech layoffs that uh, we have seen. Uh, there was an expectation by multiple product companies that the demand and growth for digital that they have seen uh, during the pandemic would not just continue, but would actually grow post pandemic. And this uh, didn't turn out to be the case because that was not what customers wanted or, or needed. Um, experimentation is also a great thing, but I have actually seen it as sort of an excuse in lieu of focus, uh, and again, to make hard decisions for what to choose. And um, as Steve Jobs said, innovation is saying no to a thousand things, to a thousand good things, because you need to choose um, what to focus on and you can't just say oh well just you know keep experimenting in in different directions because then you might end up losing focus so we have said that culture is uh, difficult to to build and to change and to define even um, how do we even go about building culture well the first step that you would need to do is to to decide and you need to decide on your values. You need to de decide on the trade-offs because they, they are trade-offs. You need to decide where you want to fall on the different, uh, um, uh, on, uh, on a spectrum of values. Um, and in order to do that, I have personally found that it is very, very helpful to choose people that are different. And that what brings to light where your shortages are and 
um, accentuates these differences that might not otherwise show. So a lot of companies have culture fit interviews. I think culture fit interviews should be flipped on their heads um, and, and used as a tool to include people that have different backgrounds, different skills, different experiences, uh, and just diverse on so many different uh, personal and professional criteria. And then, and that that helps you see uh, what your culture is and how you can change it. Um, if people know um, Alain de Botton, he is a writer, philosopher, and talks about self-discovery and self-knowledge, which is a tricky thing. And uh, he says that this knowledge is probably out there in the world, outside you, about yourself, more than it, it is within you. Um, uh, which is very interesting. So he uh, he mentions that uh, probably your friends know more about you than you do about yourself, but they're not going to be bothered to tell you. They're just there to have a good a good time. Um, so if we apply that to business, for companies, for leaders, self knowledge is is not easy, um, and you have to be, I think, listening to. Uh, the ICs listen to the leaves of your organization because they know but they might not be telling you so listen to what they have to say and find the trends you probably find differing opinions but you will probably also find trends within the feedback that you get and you might need to read between the lines um, especially if you're in a in a uh, management position so how do we go about then uh, changing a culture. Well, if you have done the homework that we just talked about, you'll probably be able to gauge the delta between where you want to go and, and how things are on the ground. Um, everyone needs to be involved and you need to take a very close look at your reward system um, because that's, as per Netflix's uh, definition, where culture really comes uh, into play. Uh, you need to educate people, uh, especially if there is going to be a big change, especially if there, this is, say, a startup that is scaling and hiring a lot of people quickly. Education needs to be a big part of it. And keep in mind that change is a process. It's It takes time. And get help if, if needed. Um, th this is an area where either an advisor or a consultant can contribute a lot if, if that's an area of focus of, of theirs. And, and here is a litmus test or a thermometer that I will throw out there. Find out how minorities feel in your company and, and that's going to be a very good indicator uh, to the culture and to the success of uh, change. Um, if you are out there uh, to in, you know include different opinions or um, you want a collaborative culture or you want to, you know, prioritize certain things such as success and getting things done, uh, minorities would be able to tell you a lot of, of how well that you're uh, doing. Um, here are also some tips before, for you if you want to assess the culture in an interview. If, uh, a lot of people tell me that um, they, they find it very hard to assess the cultures of companies they're interviewing with because when they ask questions, they only get ideal answers, which is which which is tricky. That's true. But here here is my advice to interviewees. I, I would recommend that you optimize learning. Uh, look for companies that are not just similar to places you've been to in the past and things that you've worked on in the past but also carry some learning for you that's very very useful if you're starting out your career it's very very useful if you uh, for example are in the middle of your career and you want to get into management seeing different things w gives you way more experience than um, st staying in the same company or staying in very similar companies do your research um see here is a real life example i was interviewing with the company and i checked their glass door and there was a trend in the, the employee feedback i asked about it in the interview and from the response i got i decided that this is not really a company that i would like to 
to work for and ask hard questions and you know ask about the, the leadership uh, ask if this is a product led company or a sales led company or or a founders led company um and you would be able to assess a lot from from the decision making process of companies so for example if this is um you know a, a 20 people startup and they just hired uh, their first product hire and they're saying that this is a product led company then the, then probably something here needs to be dug into uh, to be discovered more um so read read between the lines and also ask this the same question to different people because uh, then you would be able to gauge how uh, how aligned people are we, we've spoken about how alignment and speed are on a spectrum so it doesn't necessarily have to be a good thing that's the tricky part um but if you ask, for example, what, what, what's the primary goal of this product area and different people say different things, then that's something that you might want to consider. Um, and, and again, hereby I give you permission to ask to talk to more people other than the people that you have interviewed. It, it's OK, for example, if you're interviewing with, say, a hundred uh, person company and you're a product manager, to ask to talk to the CEO because um, we have we have been talking about how uh, decision making is so related to product and it will affect the CEO will probably in a direct or indirect way affect your uh, ability to succeed in in your role. Um, so here are the closing words for us to wrap up. Culture affects decision making and product success. So you have to pay a lot of attention to it and educate yourself. You have to decide on your trade-offs. Um, nice sounding values will, will just not get you there. You have to decide what to prioritize and what to trade off with. And if you don't actively define your culture, it will probably end up getting defined for you. And depending on your stage, that might be a good uh, or a bad thing, but you just have to be aware. I highly recommend people who haven't checked out the Netflix culture deck uh, to do so. Um, Gibson Biddle actually tackled the issue of culture heads on, so I would also highly recommend his talk, How Netflix Built an Innovative Culture by Gibson Biddle. When Marcy Kagan talks about product strategy, a lot of the things he talks about are related to culture. Um, like the stakeholder idea that I talked about, so that would that's also a, a, a great reference that I find that I found. Thank you so much for listening. Hope this was useful. You can find me on my website nalasalem.com if you have further questions or uh, you have a situation that you would like to discuss. Uh, thanks again.